Yeah. So does this work? Can you hear me now? Somehow. And, uh, yes. uh, control L will do it. Uh, thank you. Oh, there it is. So, uh, yes, hi everyone. Uh, I work at the CWI in Amsterdam, and I want to uh, present this uh, super parameterization project uh, we're working on. Uh, I work on this uh, together with Kais uh, at the Dutch e Science Center, and PSC Westma at KNMI and the Technical University of Delft, and Dan Kromelin at the CWI. Also, so um, to introduce super, super parameterization, uh, say we have uh, an open IFS model uh, running and with a resolution of 40 kilometers. This is the T511 grid. Then you have something like 40 kilometers resolution. And now we want to couple this model uh, with uh, a different model on a much smaller scale. So one column of open IFS, we couple with uh, a larger simulation model with a grid resolution of 100 meters, roughly. Uh, for this, we use uh, a model called DALES, the Dutch Atmospheric uh, Large Eddy Simulation. And uh, on this very small scale, we can resolve uh, clouds and convection in a way not possible in, in, a, in this uh, very large grid size. So our idea is to use the large edit simulation to study smaller features that are not explicitly resolved on a large scale. So in OpenIFS, uh, the things you can't resolve, you have to parameterize. So there is, for example, a cloud parameterization and a convection parameterization, uh, which um, estimates what these processes do in each column. But, um, if we, instead of these parameterizations, we actually simulate them, these processes, then uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can be more accurate than the, uh, the parameterizations. And uh, this is what we want to do. So we're going to pick many of these columns and co couple every one of them with its own uh, large head simulation box. And then uh, the important part is we couple in both ways. So the large edit simulation will get input from OpenIFS, but OpenIFS will also get uh, input back from the large edit simulation. So we're effectively going to replace the cloud and convection parameterizations by uh, the output from the, the large edit simulation. And uh, this is uh, super parameterization. So instead of parameterizing, you actually simulate on a smaller scale. And uh, then, then you actually don't need to parameterize because you get everything resolved. Um, of course, uh, this is going to be computationally expensive, so we hope to get something back as well. And uh, why, why do we want to do this? And especially, why do we want to uh, bring another model instead of maybe increasing the resolution, which might seem the, the obvious uh, answer? So uh, first of all, uh, clouds uh, represent one of the biggest, perhaps the biggest, uncertainty in climate simulations uh, because uh, clouds give a feedback uh, on, on the, the climate um, because they affect radiation. So if climate changes, the clouds will change, and then uh, radiation will, uh, will, will also change. So getting the clouds uh, right in the simulation will be very important. Uh, for accurate climate simulations. And this is one, one reason. And uh, if we now try the super parameterization approach, we can also compare with the existing cloud parameterization to see uh, how well it does. It's one more uh, comparison possible. And uh, if, um, if you think about why do super parameterization instead of increasing the, the open IFS resolution, this is going to be done anyway. We just uh, heard that the goal is nine kilometers uh, in the future. Uh, but uh, with nine kilometer resolution, you still can't resolve clouds. So there's still some, uh, some distance to go in this before you actually see the clouds in, in OpenIFS itself. Um, so 
this is one way to increase the resolution. And also, it's, it's a possibility to increase the resolution in just one place. We don't have to put uh, these less models everywhere. We can put them just in a region and see how this region will react. And uh, it might also be more computationally efficient to have a large head simulation um, in, in per column instead of just filling the globe with these large head simulations. And uh, this is because of how the models are coupled to each other. So we don't need to couple all these large head simulations to each other. We only couple them to the columns where they are located. So of course we make some kind of approximation here, but on the other hand, we save a lot of communication between the, the large head simulations. So it's um, it's an approximation, but it it might actually give us uh, something. And also, um, in this way, we couple two well-tested models. So OpenIFS is very well tested. It, it's known how it uh, how it's supposed to behave. And uh, if you would go and change the resolution uh, without thinking about it more than, than that, uh, then many of the parameterizations would probably not be relevant anymore because uh, you, you look at it on a completely different scale. So we leave OpenIFS as, as it is, and then we instead uh, couple it with a well-tested large head simulation, which is really tuned for these small grids. So this is easier than coming with a very high-resolution global model from scratch. Um, there's been uh, lots of work previously on superparameterization. The main and, and the origin is uh, probably Wojciech Grabowski, who suggested this uh, approach for uh, atmospheric simulations. And he also uh, suggested a coupling scheme, the way you couple the large head simulation with a uh, global model. And we are actually using his scheme uh, as it is. And uh, then there's one other uh, pair of people, uh, David Randall and Marat Karudino, who already implemented uh, superparameterization in OpenIFS. So actually in the code, there is already something for, for superparameterization. Uh, what exists, though, is uh, uh, it's uniform. So every grid box in OpenIFS will get, uh, a, super permit, uh, get a large head simulation embedded in it. And usually it's a 2D uh, large head simulation because if you want to do this in every grid box, then uh, um, simulation time will be enormously long if you spend a lot of time on each, each one. So therefore they, they embed a very uh, lightweight model and then a 2D model is more lightweight. So, so this is uh, how it is. They already see benefits from even this 2D model. So there's potential in, in superparameterization. Uh, what we want to do differently is to not embed a less in every column, just select some region we care about, and then embed a high resolution and 3D model in, in these selected columns. Uh, so what do we want to do with this? Uh, first, uh, as a test case, we want to put a few uh, less columns over the Netherlands. The Netherlands is here. And uh, then we put just uh, as many as we can afford over the center of the Netherlands, uh, just to see how this uh, works. In, in the center of the Netherlands, there's a, um, an observation site called Kabao with a tower with uh, measurement uh, instruments. So we want to uh, compare our results with these Kabao measurements and see um, if we might do better than plain open IFS, or at least test that we're not breaking stuff badly. So this is the first uh, test case. Once we have it set up, this is still very much in progress, we want to go for a cold air outbreak uh, where polar cold air uh, comes down over the ocean and causes uh, cloud formation. And for that we want a region maybe 1,000 by 1,000 kilometers uh, covered by these uh, Dallas uh, simulations. So it's something about uh, between 100 and 1,000 of the columns we want to, to couple to a less model. So this is then a rather large scale uh, simulation. Uh, we're not here yet, but uh, the, uh, this, uh, this shows the, the few grid columns over the Netherlands. 
And I want to say a few words about the coupling scheme, so how you couple a large headed simulation to a global model. And the main idea is uh, here. So any quantity you want to couple can be a temperature, humidity, uh, horizontal velocities. Uh, in the large scale model, uh, you have one grid column, which we couple. So it's just one value at a certain height. We get a vertical <laughs> profile throughout this column. In the small scale model, uh, there will be a horizontal slab um, corresponding to the, the same height. And we want the slab average in the small scale model to match the value of the large scale model. Uh, we want this to, to be valid throughout the simulation. So we start the systems uh, in this way. We initialize open IFS, and then we ask for the vertical profiles, and we initialize the less in that column to, to match that uh, vertical profile. And then to keep, keep this relationship uh, throughout the simulation, we, we force both models uh, towards each other. You can think of it as a relaxation. So we relax one model towards the other, and the other model back to the, towards the first. So we, we keep them together always. And then this uh, slab average relationship will still hold. So when we time step, we time step uh, open IFS once. This is a 10 minute step. Then we find the forcings on all the Dallas instances to make them uh, um, go towards the open IFS state. Then we step all the Dalleses many steps, because it's a small model, it's a small time step. So we step all the dialysis to catch up, and then we find forcings on open IFS to make it uh, match uh, the Dallas uh, instances. And then these forcings will be applied in the next open IFS time step. So of course, um, since these models are now separate, we we can't uh, synchronize them more than this. They will be lagged by one, one time step. But uh, it seems this is the best we can do. So we'll just live with the lag and hope for the best. Uh, I want to say a few words about the technicalities of coupling, uh, because this might also be useful for other, others of you. So we use a framework called Amuse. Uh, it comes from astrophysics. and. Uh, it uh, gives you a Python interface to any legacy code you, you care to couple to it. So Fortran code or C you, you see, are typical ones. Um, so you have any, any, any code you want. For us, it's Dallas and OpenIFS. And then you can uh, define Python functions, which will couple to this, uh, this code. And we have now made a Python interface to both uh, OpenIFS and to Dallas. And uh, the, the scheme we want to use is uh, to have these two separate models as libraries, then a Python interface on top of each one. And then we have a coupler code uh, in Python calling uh, both of these uh, libraries. So our Python code is on the top and then calling these two uh, libraries for time stepping and setting forcings and so on. So another way to, to couple the two models would be to just embed Dallas into OpenIFS. Just uh, in the place of the physics parameterization in OpenIFS, you could uh, insert the, the large head simulation. And this would be easier, less coupling, less Python, less everything. But it has the, the big drawback that um, then uh, if you want a Dallas in only some of the grid columns, then you will break the load balancing. So as long as you treat all the columns the same way, you're fine. But if you're, you want to choose a region for special treatment, then this will be very difficult to, to balance. And for this reason, we went for this, uh, this uh, library approach. And now as a byproduct, there is a Python interface to open IFS and one to Dallas. And Dallas is open source, so this you can have immediately. And uh, a Python interface we want to share. So if you're interested, please talk to me about this. Um, the OpenIFS one we are also want, willing to share, but since OpenIFS is not, not completely open, we don't know how to do this yet. But again, if you're interested, then, then let me know. Um, 
we're, we're really very happy with this uh, so far because uh, it's uh, easy to use Python as the top level coupling system. It's very nice for prototyping and so on. Uh, besides, Python was invented at CWI, so we have a slight bias to use it whenever we, we have an excuse. So um, this is the stage we are at now. We, we hope to get out of the engineering phase of this and actually run it and get some, uh, uh, some, some results out. But uh, we're still testing. Um, it, it breaks from time to time. Usually Dallas crashes if you force it too hard. And uh, well, once it's stable, we want to go for the cold air outbreak. And um, what I want you to remember um, especially is this uh, Amuse, which is a very nice uh, toolbox for anything if you want Python interfaces. And then the Python interfaces that already exist and the super parameterization approach, which uh, we hope will bring nice things. So I'm going to stop with the slides and I will show you a video of the coupled system which I have here. something. Uh, these boxes are the Dallas instances and they are on top of the OpenIFS uh, cloud field or the liquid water path. And then I also show the wind at about a kilometer height. So uh, you can see um, where OpenIFS has uh, clouds, uh, Dallas, the Dallas instances will also have clouds typically. Now you see Clouds appear in both models. And uh, neighboring boxes will also have similar conditions. So, so you see that the models are, they communicate with each other through, through the OpenIFS uh, layer. Then I have to say these boxes are somewhat exaggerated. So our Dallas instances are, are more, more like this size if you plot them to scale. So. Uh, this is how it looks now. Uh, Thanks, Frederick. Thank you. Uh, if you have